I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States, and to that republic for which those gorgeous red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under our only one God, Yahweh, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I have put our Pledge of Allegiance in its proper perspective. Now, please understand, don't stand under, (laughs) please recognize that we pledge allegiance to the God that gave us breath, who blessed us to live in such a beautiful nation that has been uh, corrupted by evildoers for decades. And it's just been in the last, since 2017, and even during the time of John F. Kennedy, our president, that it has been recognized that there have been satanic evil doers that have ruled this nation under the United States that is incorporated. But thanks be to Yahweh Almighty, Yahweh Almighty has raised up a Cyrus. Yahweh has raised up an alliance. Yahweh has raised up people that you just think are dead, that are really alive. Yahweh is raising them up and has raised them up to work on a project for decades. Decades to bring us to point, close to point Z. The purpose of this program is to reestablish the name of Yahweh first and foremost back to his word. I am a woman. I teach the younger women. I am an aged woman who has been assigned by the Almighty to address the younger women. Now, whether you choose to um, give an ear That's your business. That's your choice as you have a free will. We've all been given a free will to choose. But what has this nation chosen for decades? What kind of influence has been upon our children? What kind of influence has been upon the women, female gender, of this Republic, who this now Republic, reinstated, restored Republic of the United States. Where are the where, where are the righteous, godly fearing, the righteous, uh, Yahweh fearing, the righteous word fearing women? Where are you? Stand up and let your voice be heard. But more than anything, as a responsible mom, we are, be, we are to be teaching our children what? What? What are we to be teaching our children? The word of Yahweh first and foremost. We teach them how to pray. We teach them um, holy, set-apart living. We teach them Psalm 33 and 12 that says, How blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people he chose as his heritage. Well, I've never heard that before. Well, you've probably heard um, it said like this from the King James Version. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Now, please know, ladies, as part of teaching your, uh, your children, as part of your responsibility as a woman and a mom, um, the neck of your household, <laughs> did you hear me? The neck of your household, your head is your husband. The head of your household is your husband, male gender. All right, so that makes you the neck. All right, so... Our job as the mom, since we spend most of the time, are supposed to be spending most of the time with our children, is to teach them. And the first thing you need to know, mom, is that the name of our God, Yahweh, has been removed from his word uh, 7,000 times plus. 
and replaced with uppercase L-O-R-D. In the complete Jewish Bible, it's been replaced with uppercase Adonai and uppercase Elohim. Not only has it been replaced with uppercase L-O-R-D in our KJV, but it's also been replaced with uppercase G-O-D. This is where you see it in all uppercase letters. Well, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't either 37 years ago, and it was brought to our attention. Now, this uh, programming, Yahweh Ministries, has been on the airways for nearly 37 years. I find it rather um, comical that they have uh, put the religious programming on on the wee hours of the morning. Isn't that fabulous? Instead of prime time. Prime time. So, I guess it's the few that find the narrow path. So, perhaps, if you're riding down the road in the wee hours of the morning between 4.30 and 5, or between 5 and 5.30, you might pick up station WCKY out of Cincinnati. If you're riding through um, Jackson, Mississippi, you might find uh, a voice like this, similar to this, who uplifts the name of Yahweh out of Jackson, Mississippi, WTWZ Radio. So I encourage you women to search these things that I share with you. Search diligently so you know how and what to teach your children. This is so very important. Therefore, back to Psalm 33 and 12. I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. It says, How blessed is the nation whose God is, there's that uppercase Adonai. KJV says, Blessed is the nation whose God is, there's that uppercase L-O-R-D. Therefore, when you are listening to this programming, when you hear the name of Yahweh, know that I have put his name back into his word where humans have removed it. Who had the right to do that? Who had the right to remove the name of our God from his word? Who? It makes it so easy to change his name to a title in uppercase letters so that when you get to the new blood covenant, you can put some kind of erroneous error in there. They've also uh, uh, a monk by the name of Peter Gallatin, who's also known as Peter Galatinus. He was the one who introduced the Jehovah name. The letter J, ladies, is less than 300 years old. This is something else that you need to know so that you can teach your children. That J name that you see in your New Blood Covenant was never J in the beginning. If you go to your 1611 KJV, there is no J-E-S-U-S there. No, ma'am, there is not. It is spelled I-E-S-U-S. Well, what's the big deal? The big deal is this. It doesn't stop there. It goes back to I-E-S-O-U-S. And if you do a diligent search, you will find that I-E-S-O-U-S, which evolved to I-E-S-U-S, which evolved to J-E-S-U-S, is in fact the son of the Greek sky god Zeus, a mythological character. <gasps> oh my, I don't believe she's saying that. Well, believe it. Now think about this. I say these t- things to stir you up so that you'll look into this diligently, so you'll search it out for yourself. What's wrong now is we tend to believe the preacher, the teacher, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, whatever, the apostle. And because they're a good old Joe, uh, they're a good old boy and they live pretty good to suit whatever our estimation of good is. When the word says that there is none good, no, not one, that came from a Shiok's tongue. Mashiach's tongue said there is none good, no, not one, not even himself, because he was flesh and bone. Therefore, we don't teach just because we heard a good old Joe teach something. Who would think to question that J name? Who? Who? Because it's been around for so so many centuries. Well, who changed it? 
Who inserted it? Who put it in there? When it is very plain in your new blood covenant, ladies, that it's the word speaks of um, great is the mystery of godliness for God, Elohim, was manifest in flesh. Well, who is God? Who is he? What's his name? He's not a God called by many names. The word name in reference to his word is in the singular tense, not plural. He has many attribute titles, many attribute adjectives, but he has only one name, just one. And humans have removed it from his word. Um, I'm wondering with all of my research in the past three years, I'm wondering if that synagogue of Satan that Revelation speaks of uh, is part of the culprits uh, that removed his name from his word. Um, As the synagogue of Satan has been ruling this nation since 1871 through three foreign entities. Washington, D.C., which is not part of the United States, it is a foreign entity. The Vatican City, which is not part of Italy, it is a foreign entity. Um, the City of London is not part of England, Great Britain. It is a foreign entity. And these foreign entities have ruled the people of the United States and around the world to pay unrighteous and unholy taxes on land and on income, among many other things, through our governments of the past. And guess what? Yahweh Almighty chose Osiris. Um, number 45, Yahweh chose Osiris. Isaiah chapter 45, how coincidental that it should uh, parallel with President 45 and that Cyrus was taken by the hand. He was anointed of Yahweh. He was a man of integrity that would not take a bribe. He was a man that was shown untold riches. Now, isn't this too coincidental? That Yahweh Almighty has worked through alliance, alliance nations for decades to defeat this synagogue of Satan. Now, we know with Bible prophecy, those that are familiar with the prophecy of Daniel, that he saw a seven-year period. Moms, this is another something for you to teach your children. We have a prophecy of Daniel. He speaks of a seven-year period. We see in your new blood covenant that there is going to, there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. This is the time that we are presently living. Wars and rumors of wars. We are in a changeover, moms. And it's time for you to get down to business and know who your real and only God and Savior is, your only Redeemer, your only first and last. Thus says Isaiah 44 and 6. Uh, Let me pull that up here. Here we go. Now I'm going to read it without the uppercase L-O-R-D and without the uppercase Adonai. Isaiah 44 and 6 from the complete Jewish Bible should read, Thus says Yahweh, not Adonai, Israel's king and redeemer, Yahweh Zevaot. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God, no Elohim. The KJV should read, Thus says Yahweh, not uppercase Lord, the king of Israel, and his Redeemer, Yahweh, not uppercase Lord, his Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts. Notice, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God, there is no Elohim. Let's read that again. 
Thus says Yahweh, not uppercase Lord, the king of Israel, and and his redeemer, Yahweh of hosts. Yahweh, what redeems? What redeems? Blood. Blood redeems. Yahweh of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God, there is no Elohim. Who is the first and the last, says Isaiah? Yahweh, not J and not Shua. It says, Yahweh, who are we going to believe? Who are we going to believe? The prophets? Yes, we believe the prophets. Our new blood covenant has introduced an um, erroneous error, horrible error, a horrible error of a J pagan name. Others choose to use a Shua name simply because it means salvation. Yeshua means salvation. The Hebrew root word for Yeshua is Yasha. And then some people want to shorten it to Shua and put a uh, Shua on attached to Yah. Yah being the short poetic form of Yahweh found in Psalm 68, 4. But if in the KJV, you see it with a J. That letter J is less than 300 years old, ladies. It's time to wake up and know the truth. This is the big lie. You've heard of the big lie from our dear 45th president? You've heard of the big lie? Well, I'm sharing with you the biggest lie. That Yahweh's name has been removed from his word, Mom. Do you care? Oh, it don't matter what you call him. It does too. Let's, let's call you by some other name. Are you going to be able to sign a check in some other name that you weren't given? Are you going to be able to uh, answer to another name uh, besides the name that you were given? No, you're not. You're going to answer to your one name. We only have one God, and he's not a God called by many names. Again, he's a God of many wonderful, glorious attributes and titles, but he's one God with one name. Do you say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ladies, do you say hallelujah? Of course you do. Do you know what you're saying? Well, yeah. We were taught in the apostolic ranks that hallelujah meant praise God. Well, they've got part of it right. Hallelujah is Hebrew for praise. But Yah is the short poetic form of Yahweh. Now, some use various uh, pronunciations. And um, there is a Hebrew scripture reason why we use Yahweh. There are Hebrew root words why we use Yahweh that I cannot find to support uh, any other pronunciation. For example, this is another thing you might want to consider, Mom. Look at that I am that I am passage. It never said I am that I am. It said, I will be what I will be. When Moses said, well, who shall I say sent me? And the first thing he says is, I will be what I will be. The next verse identifies his name. So what was he saying? I will be what I will be. Well, at that time, uh, Israel needed a deliverer. He needed a savior. Israel needed this. He's our doctor. If we need a doctor, he's our lawyer. If we need a lawyer, he's our healer. If we need a healer, he's our life and our breath. He is our everything. Again, it never should have read, I am that I am. It should have read, I will be what I will be. Now, there are two Hebrew root words for will be. They are Hayah and Hawa. Now, the ha part is like an article word, like a, and, or the, all right? So, we have Hayah and Hawa. Thus, the next verse says to tell the people that I am Yahweh, and this is my name as a memorial forever. He got his name Yahweh from the Hebrew root words for will be. Haya and Hawa. This is very simple. Simple stuff. Humans make this hard. Wonder why? Is it because they don't want his name spoken? That's another lie. You who 
say his name should not be spoken, may I remind you that the Hebrew brings out the words speak, say, mention, declare, proclaim as articulation words. They called on his name. Wonder why that ruling was made not to say his name? Now, we're not supposed to speak his name in vain. We're not supposed to speak his name for nothing. I speak his name for something to share with the younger women what we ought to be teaching our children. All right, you ladies who's got the um those Ten Commandments uh, hanging on your wall. Maybe you got them hanging out in your yard. Maybe you got them hanging up the top of your driveway. And uh, you probably hadn't thought a thing about it about what they say, because the first commandment says, you shall have no other gods before me. Who is the me, ladies? Who is the me? Have you ever looked it up? Well, the previous verse answers it, but you have to know again that that uppercase L-O-R-D in your KJV should have said Yahweh and not uppercase L-O-R-D. You who have a complete Jewish Bible, it ne- the previous verse never should have said a- uppercase Adonai. It should have said Yahweh. So here we go. Deuteronomy 5 and uh, 6. Well, most people start with uh, verse, um, let's see, verse 7. Most people start with verse 7. It says, you are to have no other gods before me. Okay, well, who's the me? So we're going to go to the previous verse, Deuteronomy 5 and 6, reading from your King James Version. It should read, I am Yahweh, not uppercase L-O-R-D, your God, your L, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Simple. Complete Jewish Bible should read, I am Yahweh, not uppercase Adonai, I am Yahweh, your El, who brought you out of the land of Egypt where you lived as slaves. Wow. So, perhaps this should be attached to your Ten Commandments. Somebody deliberately and willfully left that out. That's why we can rightfully say, I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States. Now know this. When those 13 colonies were established, there were people that honored that name of Yahweh, that yud Hey wah Hey. They honored that name. They honored his word to the degree... In Massachusetts, uh, presently on the books of the law, back when the first, um, let's see, it was the second governor for the state of Massachusetts. Uh, I think his name was William Bradford. William Bradford. Um, It was established as law. It was against the law to celebrate pagan Christmas. And anyone having a tree, which is an idol, And you can find that in Jeremiah chapter 10. You can find that very easily. It's called a stalk. That stalk is a tree. They deck it with silver and gold. That was a god. It was a pagan deity. We have inherited lies. But back to um, the law. As it stood in the 13 colonies, it was against the law to celebrate pagan Christmas. It was against the law to have a tree. And you could be fined and or put in jail for such a thing. Furthermore, William Bradford is buried in one of the oldest cemeteries, if I'm not mistaken, of Massachusetts. And he has, in Hebrew, Yahweh is good, with the yud Hey wah Hey on his tombstone. This is easy to find unless some devil has, uh, has uh, marred his tombstone. Uh, These are things that we need to look up. These are things that I've learned myself. These are things that I have been sharing. And my husband, who is deceased now uh, for the last five years, yet we still play his programming on how and why the name of Yahweh has been removed from his word. It was Yahweh who was manifest in flesh, one name into all nations. 
one name into all nations. Hallelujah. Universal language. Hallelujah. Not hallelujah and not hallelujah. Hallelujah. The short poetic form of Yahweh. So the first commandment, ladies, that we are to be teaching our children is Deuteronomy 5 and 6. I am Yahweh, your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall have none other gods before me. Who do you worship? Who do you worship? Do you worship Jay? Do you worship Shua? Please inform me where you find in the first blood covenant that the object sacrificed was worshipped. You don't find it, do you? But Yahweh was praised for providing the sacrifice. Furthermore, if you can find in your, um, any of you that can get a hold of, I'm not really crazy about new international versions, but if you can get a hold of the Hebrew English Old Testament and you go to those verses where Abraham offered up Isaac and, and Isaac's asking his father, he said, father, he says, um, uh, where is the sacrifice? And he just plainly says, Yahweh will be provided in that particular Bible. And as a matter of fact, it's the only one of its kind, the only Bible of its kind that has the exact English underneath the Hebrew. So that when you read from right to left, it sounds like you're speaking in broken English. Isn't that beautiful? Yahweh will be provided. Abraham was prophesying that Yahweh will be provided. Yahweh manifest in flesh. The I am that was crucified. That I am the, not the I am that you say, but the I will be what I will be that the scripture correctly says. These are things, mom, that you need to look into to teach your children. We are living in a rough time. We're fixing to see some bumpy roads. You better prepare your household, ladies. You better have you at least three to six weeks worth of food, water, and supplies because we don't know what's going to happen soon and very soon. Mass arrests have been made for quite some time now. And it will go dark for 10 days. 10 days we will, have, we will go dark. Our money system will change over from a fiat system to the Nasara Gasara new financial system of the rainbow currency. We are living in a time of wars and rumors of wars. Then we get a little bit of a breather. We find that um, there will be a time of peace and safety just for a time, just for a season. And then we know what's going to happen in the middle of that week, in the middle of that seven-year period that Daniel saw. That son of perdition is going to stick his head up. And there will be tribulations such as the world has never known. So, Mom, what kind of woman ought we to be? In all manner of righteous living, within and without. Women years ago never showed their nakedness. That you couldn't see mountains and valleys on both ends. They were modest. They, were, they wore modest apparel. They presented themselves in a demeanor that is modest. But the enemy knew what he was doing. He got the woman, the mom, out of the home and put her on the workforce. There's nothing wrong with working from home if you can juggle teaching your children and training up your children in the way that they should go. There was nothing wrong with that. But when women got out of the home, uh uh-oh. I pray that you'll search these things diligently that I share with you, ladies. Until next time, please know that we pledge allegiance to one God, Yahweh. Our flag represents this gorgeous nation that he has allowed us to live in. Why did Yahweh allow us to live here? Because we honored his word. And his word has been horribly desecrated. 
for, for the last several decades. May Yahweh help us all. Until next time, Shalom.